Cut it off. Cut it off. Why? Why? Cut it off. Next time. But why? Cut it off. Hey, you don't want to fix the camera. Okay, okay, okay. Today, we will not turn off the camera, even in extreme cases. May I ask you? We'll take a walk through the black markets. I want a Rolex. Or or silver Rolex. And we'll take a walk through the black neighborhoods. We'll take a look at underground casinos. Hi. Is anyone here? Queensbridge right now. You are crazy. You look crazy. Tourist guides don't talk about this New York. And even local residents try not to know about it. Well, or not to notice. But this is the real Big Apple. Parked in a jag. Guys, welcome to Queensbridge House, the most dangerous neighborhood in New York. These are social housing blocks, so-called projects. 99% of the population is dark-skinned. Whites are especially not local. It is better not to go here. I am Stas Natanzon, and today's episode is about New York, which you didn't know for sure. So guys, we are going to Queensbridge House. A black quarter. Atmospheric and tense here. Some guys are collecting money. White people don't usually come here. Such houses in New York are called projects. These are typical neighborhoods. Buildings. Tell me, what are the projects? What is it? Some yeah. house. It's a low income for the veterans. 16. For the army veterans. The projects is like, it's like a big community, I guess. The black hood. Y'all want to come to the and f with us, man? That's what the f we going to do. We're going to f with y'all's that. That's it. The projects are hot places to live for people who are low income. Are there... Uh... How many projects are there in New York? Yes. Queensbridge House is the largest project in the entire United States. Six blocks, 96 buildings, 7,000 residents. According to official statistics, only 2.5% are white, and the unemployment rate is 16.5%. For comparison, in neighboring areas, no more than 5%, and on the other side of the East River, in Manhattan, 2%. But Queensbridge is only one of the projects in New York. There are more than 300 of them in the city. Windows and projectors are not just covered with bars. They are double bars. The top covers with iron grid and below, something like a thin grid. Even the air conditioners are covered with bars. The crime rate is the highest in the city. Many residents live on social security benefits. They sit on benches all day or just dance in the streets, and nothing seems to bother them. Even gunshots in the neighboring yard. Short. Hell, there had been just a shooting somewhere in the neighborhood. And there were screams coming from there. Here, this is not uncommon. Once a week, they shoot accurately. The ambulance had already gone there, and there was a lot of gunfire. They arrived pretty quickly, maybe two to three minutes passed, no more. 17-year-old reputed gang member is accused of firing the bullet that killed an innocent man walking his dog in Queens. The news later reported that the shooter was detained. Look, it all happened at the intersection I was passing just a few minutes ago. The funny thing is that the people who sit on the benches didn't care at all. That is, they laughed. Someone shoots, and they sit and talk. They didn't care about anything at all. Tell me, is it very dangerous here now? 
Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Very dangerous. Yes. Very Any dangerous. place where you have a lot of people and mm -hmm. they, 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 they struggle. The struggle is a little hard for individuals and they, you know, they can't eat and can't sleep and things of this nature. Yeah, it becomes a little difficult to live. It's very, it becomes harder. Real Streets maintains here an interactive map of New York's gangs. Do you see that big red square? This territory, which is controlled by the Queensbridge Gang or QB Gang, is the main stronghold of black gangs in Western Queens. To the north of them is the territory of Latin Americans. Mexicans are Chamacos Locos, Cubans are Nietas, and the powerful Latin American alliance is Almighty Latin King and Queen Nation, or ALKQN. On the contrary, in Harlem, there are black gangs, Gutta, East Army, and Broad Day Shooters, who all fought for the territory in 2021. Yeah. But have you ever noticed that there was a movie out with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio? What was that there? Gangs, Gangs of New York. New York. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Remember back then, everybody had, you had the blues, the reds, and this, that, and other. Right. It's, it's, it's something similar. Right. You know what I mean? You got color, whatever color you are, you're part of this and you're part of that. These guys are talking at the store. Suddenly, one pulls out a gun. Local bandits do not shoot very well. Look, both shots are almost point blank, but missed. We can't show you what happened next because of the limitations of YouTube. The epidemic of violence in the last two years has spilled out of poor neighborhoods and swept the entire city. We're post COVID. Knock wood, knock everything. We're post COVID, but there's still low tide inequality and it is still a matter of life and death. It's so bad that when you look at the recent numbers, more people are dying of gun violence than of COVID. Things are so bad that even the mayor of New York, Andrew Cuomo, is not sitting in the chair. He was replaced by former cop Eric Adams, who promised to put an end to the gangs of New York. We can't allow gang violence to continue to believe that it will control the streets of our city. And far too many local crews and gang members, they believe that. And we have to send a strong message, not in the New York, uh, that we want to raise our children and families in. Can I film you? Free lunch, nigga. Take that. Free lunch. We going right out. They ain't quiet, nigga. Free lunch, nigga. Queensbridge right now. You are crazy. You look crazy. Yo, you look like Sunday Man at the Mingo. What's your name? Pete? You're like, uh. Before you start doing something, guys, always ask if there's something from the police or not. The fact is that a police officer under American law is required to introduce himself if he is directly asked about it. So, if you say you're not a cop, then you're definitely not a cop. I'm from Russia. From Russia. What the hell are you doing on the way over here? I... I just travel and shoot different stories. Stories about different hoods in the world. What's your name? I? I was Russia. Russia like Queensbridge? Mm. Russia, not the Queensbridge. No, not like Queensbridge. No, no. Later, I'll tell you how Russia is similar to Queensbridge. Look, by the way, some guys cover their faces for filming for some reason. It's like here. I'll tell you what it's like here. You ain't from here. Don't come here. I'll tell you, I'm at your own risk. <laughs> Welcome to the concrete jungle. In the danger everywhere, but yeah, New York City get dangerous. They get dangerous. Uh, did it become more? Is it because of the pandemic? Tell you the truth, as far as New York, I can't speak for. It. I live in Florida now, uh -huh. but Florida got it, it. Yeah, it went up. You know what I'm saying? Because. Once people are reduced to a condition where they have no other option but to do what they gotta do to, you know what I mean, make their mm -hmm. daily living, you know, of course the crime rate is gonna go up. Naturally, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, this is the city, bro. This is this is the melon pot, bro. You know what I'm saying? Everybody stacked up on top of each other. What you expect, bro? You know what I'm saying? Uh, such a place is like I've heard that all the territories here are divided between people who keep order. To protect these places and to monitor the territory so that everyone lives by the rules. Is that the same here? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, 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 yeah, it's like everywhere, bro. Gang shit, yeah, hell yeah. We started gangs, it's America. What you think? We started this shit, bro. So Guys play dice for money. However, for small amounts, the bet is 20 bucks. 
Later, I will show you what a real underground casino in New York is worth billions of terms. 40? 3.30 is we out of here. Back, man. 40 to you. Oh, all right. Yeah. 3.30 is we out of here. Boss, you uh. Hey, now. 40 back to you now. According to the methodology of the NYPD, this is a group, a few teenagers, minor violations, light drugs, gambling. Several groups that regularly work in the area and commit more serious crimes become crew. They, in turn, unite into gangs that already hold separate areas of the city. Gangs form alliances. The largest of them are mainly Black Bloods and Crips which originally appeared in Los Angeles, but became national, as well as Latin American gangs, Mexicans, Dominicans, and immigrants from other countries. Members of many gangs still use gestures to recognize each other. C is Crips, and a circle with your fingers is Bloods. Rock and Roll Goat is Latin Kings. If you add three fingers to each gesture, it's Killa, the gang killer. The usual picture in searchlights near this entrance is someone was shot. People bring flowers. They bring flowers for about a week after the murder. Hey, come here. Get your hands. Get, your, get out of the pocket. Get your hands out of your pocket. A guy in a hoodie, apparently a loner, apparently tried to rob the store, but ran into the police. He almost escaped, but the policeman opened fire. Drop the gun! Similar attacks occur almost daily in the vicinity of projects. Look at all of the police tape down there. I'm going to get my camera and, and zoom in. Very, very, very heavy scene here. And something like I've never seen devastating. Just a little while ago when I first arrived on scene, you can see that uh, I heard and seen that the families and even a mother seeing my child, my childhood is gone. And quote unquote, I took care of him all his life. You know, if you got a lot of crime, a lot of times you become numb to the fact that there's shooting going on and you don't, it's regular. You know, I used to teach the kids that when you hear shots, get down on the floor. Everywhere there are such announcements. This is a set of city guards or city angels. We need children from 8 to 18 years old. This program began in the 70s and the late 80s in order to reduce the crime rate in the projects. Teenagers, very young children, began to be recruited into youth security detachments. Children, in fact, defended themselves. Well, accordingly, they did not get involved in gangs. 23-year-old Curtis Sliwa, the night manager at a McDonald's restaurant, and he hit upon the idea of citizen patrols to look for and interrupt subway crimes. Soon, the red beret and t-shirt uniform of the Magnificent 13 started becoming familiar to riders. This movement was born as a civil response to violence. However, the Guardian Angels' methods soon became little different from their opponents. There are unanswered questions. Is the Magnificent 13 taking the law into its own hands? And they were closed. But in 2019, the Red Berets again went on the New York patrol. Have we reached the 1970s again in New York City? We're starting to slip back into the abyss. Unfortunately, we have a part-time mayor who doesn't seem to recognize that, de Blasio. Guardian Angels were the ones who protected stores from robbers during the great New York looting in 2020. Here is this cool sign on the building, drug-free zone. Once again, guys, drugs are evil. This is serious. Unless you talking numbers, we ain't speaking about the right things. Switch up on my nigga for a figure, that's not like me. Batty with a body in the lobby, she like nice things. She used to know me then, she like me now, that's funny timing. Maximal. The ultimate vulgarity of filming in New York's Times Square. Especially in this rain. So, let's do something about it. Простите, ребят. 
Sorry guys, just the only place to talk right now. I hope you understand. But before I forget, I just wanted to tell you something. In New York, the following is very important. What area do you live in? This is the aristocratic Greenwich Village, or Glamorous Soho, in diplomatic Murray Hill. If you have money and children, then it's good to live in the Upper East Side or Upper West Side. But there are two areas where people do not want to settle voluntarily. These are Harlem and Chinatown. This is Chinatown, a place of illegal trade and underground casinos, the most closed community in New York. Are we going to break in? This is a typical Chinatown. Guys stand in the middle of the day and play drums with all their dope. They absolutely don't care that people live somewhere, that maybe someone puts a child to bed. It's great to drum with all the dope on a Sunday afternoon. Yeah, yeah. Chinatown, among other things, is the cheapest area in New York. But it is a delicious food area, Asian food. Therefore, there are huge queues in restaurants on weekends. Look, this is the queue at the restaurant. And it goes to the entrance just because it's delicious and cheap. On Sunday, there are many queues here. Everyone in New York knows that the main business that the Chinese control is laundry. Laundries are all about cash. Cash is money laundering and accordingly. That's why the Chinese were engaged in this business, but not only in this business. For some reason, Chinatown has a huge number of hairdressers. Look, a beauty salon is there. Here is another beauty salon, across the street, another barbershop of the same type. We pass on literally 10 meters and see another salon and another hairdresser. There are about 30 barbershops on the same damn street in this area. What do they cut? Here is a wonderful square. The guys play Chinese folk instruments. But I brought you here to show you something else. I brought you to see the biggest underground gambling center in New York. This is a casino in the open air. Every Sunday, the Chinese people who live in the area gather here to play poker. There are several different types of poker, but each table is a real money game. These are illegal games. Is there any gambling prohibited in the city? Yes, but they're just playing their own poker game. No money involved? Okay. Please note that there are no Asians at the tables at all. They don't let their own people play. So, I'll explain. Not everyone plays for money. Here, two grandfathers spread out a Chinese newspaper and play. But most of them came here to tickle their nerves. Here, a Chinese croupier collects bets, passes them to his assistant, who recalculates everything and distributes the chips. The entrance ticket to start the game is $5. But they bet more. Some even bet $1,000. In general, according to various estimates, several hundred thousand dollars are spent here every weekend. There are people crowding around. Some of them are playing. 
Some of them are watching. But the most important thing is that there are bank holders. That is, guys who from time to time come to the tables, take the cash somewhere safe. Because if the police raid, then you need to show that there are no money tables. Here, the caretaker of the casino comes to collect cash. He has two guards. One looks, so I do not approach. Both guards keep one hand in their pockets at all times. Look, they are calmly leaving the square with money. Man, I don't get this. The situation seems to be heating up. The guys copied that I was withdrawing money, went somewhere and angrily looking around. I was told, I was told to get out of here. Yeah, I guess I'm getting out, getting out, getting out. Here you can find a lot of problems. And a reasonable question arises. If the gaming business is banned in New York, then how can there be an open-air casino in full view of everyone? But this is the essence of the American approach. If the state can avoid interfering in something, it will not interfere there. So far, no one has been robbed, no one has been killed, and most importantly, no one from the local residents has complained about it. The police will pass by and will not do anything. This applies to everything, like drugs and their use, prostitution, illegal trade. As long as you do not complain, you can live in peace. This applies to immigrants. Here, no one arranges raids on illegal immigrants who have already arrived in the country. You can live in America all your life without a passport, without a residence permit, without a work permit, and still work without knowing any restrictions, without hiding, if no one complains about you. However, as soon as someone complains, you're going to take it all in. There are illegal casinos with billions of turnover. The so-called gambling den. Literally, gambling den. They are left over from the days when Chinatown was ruled by the Tongs, the legendary Chinese gangs. In those days, people came to the area to play and smoke in the so-called opium den. There are still some of them. But due to the limitations of YouTube, you won't be able to show them. But you'll see gambling rooms. Oh, this is a legendary place. This is Doyer Street, in the days when the Chinese gangs ruled. This place was a neutral zone. Showdowns were forbidden here. In this place, where the beauty salon is now, there was a movie theater. You could go to this movie theater in peace. But at the beginning of the 20th century, everything changed. Here, the toughest showdown began. Moreover, they killed representatives of the Tong with axes. This asphalt was covered in blood. As they say, the blood flowed literally like a river. That's why that turn is called the Bloody Turn in New York, and the street itself is called the Alley of Death. These are the tunnels that the Tongs used to move around Chinatown. And they also hid gambling and opium den. We're currently in one of the houses in Chinatown. Here, there is another underground casino. We go without an invitation. Just like that. What is it? This is a Chinese MFC, a multifunctional center. Here you will be treated, registered and put to work. The inscriptions on the walls are only in Chinese. In this room, for example, they issue a medical insurance number. And here is the citizenship, green card and other documents to be legalized in the United States. This turned out to be an office that provides legalization for Chinese people. So, if you left China, you need to get a driver's license, health insurance and so on. They will help you with your documents here. Here is such a place. They even gave me a business card. 
if I want to be legalized. But I have to be Chinese to do that. This is a very unusual place. We'll explore the buildings further. I was told that the game room is here somewhere. A narrow staircase leads to the top floor, and sounds can be heard from above. Look at the door, and there's an inscription on the top that says something about golden bulls. I don't really understand Chinese, so I decided to go inside. <sighs> Hi. Is anyone here? Hey. The men were clearly taken aback by my appearance and at first didn't even realize what to do with me. Here, they play mahjong, which is a Chinese equivalent to poker, but they use dice instead of cards. It's not fun to play without money. If you get tired of mahjong, you can bet money on sports. There are sheets of odds on the wall. Well, you can play on a good old slot machine. There are three of them here. One stands at the entrance. Look, it's locked with a huge lock, and there are two more submachine guns in the back. Look. The cameras are watching the players, so they don't cheat. Can I film? No, I just want to film life in Chinatown. Can we talk? You don't know English? But you know what I mean. No, no English. But you understand me. There are snacks and coffee on the table. The windows are covered. It doesn't look very presentable. But there are millions of dollars in these rooms they can pass. You see, they play here too. And there are also slot machines. All of this, of course, is illegal. So before we get punched in the face, we're out of here. Here we are in Harlem, folks. I feel, to be honest, as if I were black in Biryalovo. Everyone turns around. What the f*** is this guy even doing here? Not a pleasant feeling, but nevertheless. And here is another project behind my back. 100 years ago, Harlem was a white area, but blacks began to flee from the South, fleeing segregation and lynching that prevailed in the Southern states. In 20 years, by 1930, the black population of Harlem had grown from 10% to 70%. And by 1950, to almost 100%. Harlem was taking over new neighborhoods, and the so-called Big Harlem appeared. People lived in slums, without water or sewage. Toilets were on the street. People were heated with a bourgeois stove. Apartments turned into rubber communal apartments. The government has started building mass-scale model homes. Another New Deal project was the first low-income municipal housing on New York's Lower East Side, notorious for its crime and disease breeding. Projects were officially opened by the First Lady of the United States, Eleanor Roosevelt. The first projects in America began to appear in 1934. It is here in New York that the first one was built for whites, and it is located in the area where prestigious houses are now located. In addition, this is the first project for black people, Harlem River. It was built in 1937 to 1938. The idea was to occupy the black population during the Great Depression while at the same time giving them housing that continues to belong to the city. People pay a symbolic price or do not pay at all. Since the houses for the poor saved on everything, there are no architectural excesses. There are the cheapest materials in order to reduce prices. They began to build buildings higher and higher, up to four floors, and then up to nine and 12 floors, and then up to 17 floors, and eventually up to 20 floors. Does it remind you of anything? It was believed that this would reduce crime. Here is a poster from that time. Slums give birth to crime. But it turned out that high-rise buildings are no better in terms for crime. Projects have become hubs of poverty, disunity, and drug trafficking. Moreover, this happened not only in New York, but also in all the cities that decided to build projects. Now try to guess. This high-rise building is a project or one of the sleeping areas in the vast expanses of the USSR. Okay, that's Chicago. But you get the point. Following in the footsteps of America, 
armorers began to erect everywhere. In our country, they continued to do this. But in the USA, in the 80s, they realized what they had done. Multi-story residential buildings are a threat to the city. The countdown begins. Three, two, one. Apparently, time will pass with our housing and communal services, and the authorities will be forced to do something similar. I was born in Brooklyn, so was, so was him and his family. Yes. Before we moved here to, like you said, it's Queens luxury, right? So, <laughs> he's laughing because when his brother first got here, when Paul Kim moved to Astoria Houses, which is down that way, another big housing place, right? he called his friends back home in Brooklyn. He said, yo, man. The weekend they had shoot out. Yo, man, um, I just moved to, I just moved to, uh, uh, luxury condo. Huh? We got, we got the, we got the ocean in back of my window. You know, yeah, because yeah, because you buy the water. Yeah, and you, you think that you was like, you think that your parents became rich because you like, oh wow, it's so yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Man. You know, right. grass green and everything. <laughs> and I got here when we came to Queens, and I walked in the building. I see how. You know, Mr. Eddie was in there doing the floor, they were shining, like you could tap in. I was like, Mommy, you bought a condo? Yeah. We rich. I was like, yeah. Nah, we rich. I saw my cousins them out there. Yeah. They was like, what? I was like, man, we live on the top floor. The top floor. Yeah. Look out my window, you can see all the basketball court. You know. So I mean, it's the it was it's it's the hood, you know. But back in in the time when we first came here, this place was was like it was like luxury to us. Yeah. New York City authorities have kept their projects perfectly clean in recent years. Here, they are constantly being cleaned. Here, the paths are being swept. Even a special gardener cuts the bushes in the squares. Look, here is such a cute garden of flowers located near the social housing. The fact is that a special service should take care of social housing. Around the projects, everything is dirty and painted, and the houses themselves are clean. The walls are not covered with writing, not painted, and the pathways are swept. Look at the quality of the playground near the houses. Comfortable tables and benches, a children's slide, a basketball field with lighting and excellent coverage nearby. Public spaces here are really better than near some luxury homes in the same New York. This is what the entrance of an ordinary house looks like. There are eight to ten apartments on each floor. The apartments are quite small, some measuring 25 to 30 square meters, some 50 meters. The walls are not painted, not dirty. There are no graffiti. That is, it is absolutely clean. This is a perfect clean entrance. You can never say that this is social housing, the cheapest possible in New York. On the roof of each house, there is a solar panel to make electricity cheaper. These solar panels heat the water. Just have a look at what gorgeous view opens up from the roof of this house on Manhattan. On high rises. On the bridge. It's just unrealistically beautiful here. It's probably the best place to look at in New York. Very beautiful. Straight class. Hey. What's up?
What's down? As you can see, stoned people are everywhere. In general, if you do not look at the crime rate, the atmosphere here may seem relaxed. Here, for example, there is a barbecue stand. That is, guys on weekends do barbecue, fry kebabs, some delicious food, and then go rob someone. Since local residents have no money, the authorities have stopped taking a fixed fee for accommodation. They do 30% of your income. 30% of your income? Yes. That, that's, so there is no like street. So there is no fixed fee. It's 30% of your income. Whatever. Out of, from your income. Right. And if I don't earn anything, then I won't have to pay. In addition, the city from time to time makes repairs in apartments, updates kitchens and toilets, some furniture. In general, it does not look like social housing, but rather luxury housing. However, not all cars belong to local residents. There are a huge number of such abandoned cars without license plates in the area. Look, there are no front or rear plates on this car. It's obvious from the dust layer that this car hasn't been driven in a very long time. It's very likely that this car was just stolen and left here. As they explained to me, since the car has no license plates, the police cannot check and determine whether it is stolen or not. To open the car, someone must report the abandoned car. If no one comes forward, the police won't touch you. The car can stand without license plates for a year and a half. Needless to say, it is not customary for residents to inform on each other. So someone stole a car, rented a room, abandoned it, and it's been around for years. There's a real sneaker cult in projects. It's like people just want to be like other people. You don't really have to, you can have your own style, but open, like people just want to be like others. You know. You're wearing Jordans, aren't you? Yeah. They are. How much do they cost? Um, like, it depends on what size you wear. Like, the price depends on what size you wear, what size sneaker. Well, they cost 500, 600? Yeah, some of them. Despite the fact that most people here do not have enough money for food, and they also do not pay for an apartment, but live in social housing, they buy sneakers for $1,000 and sometimes for $5,000. Jordans go up to $40,000 per pair. These Jordans were bought for a million dollars, but at least they were worn by Michael Jordan himself. But the new $53,000 Nike's limited edition, or here are stilts for the poor, for just $1,999. There is even an exchange of rare sneaker models. You can invest money in them, or some models grow in price over the years better than stocks. Moreover, when the programs of the black population began in America, sneaker stores were smashed in different cities of the country, as well as in New York, and the most expensive pairs were taken out of them. Everyone dresses stylishly. Look at the guys. They don't have cheap brands. What is What's going on in your head? In your head. Got to pick my hair. Why do you need it? My afro. Do you constantly brush your hair? Yeah. Pick up my afro. You know, everybody got to get their hair. And of course, sneakers can be new and clean. Tell me, what kind of sneakers are you wearing? How much do they cost? Easy, easy. In this life, no. Two hundred dollars? He got them shits from two fifths, my man. <laughs> 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 Yo, nah, they like to look. If you catch a boy, look. If you catch it when they first come out, you're gonna pay like two sixty, two eighty the most. If you don't catch them when they come out, they could go up to like 600. Me personally, I would never pay that. I caught these luckily when they came out. You know what I'm saying? From the Adidas website. Wow. $600 for running shoes. Yeah, if you don't catch them the day they come out, uh -huh. you got to pay more. Yeah. A lot uh -huh. of people pay that. And your belt is cool too. Like expensive as well. Yeah, BB Simon. <laughs> and the clock is cool. Yeah, that's a fact. <laughs> this is Harlem, baby. This is what we do. So home and fashion. Look. 
You know what I'm saying? We made white tees cool, you heard? Look. <laughs> I don't know what this bum ass hat he got. What was your birthday? Yeah. Nike oh, golf hat. Golf hat. He plays golf. Nike See? golf hat. He plays golf. Is it expensive? No. $30 hat. So you don't wear expensive clothes? No. Why does he wear it? I shop on a clearance rack. <laughs> Why does he do that? I, does he, he got do money. That? I don't have money. I, I, ain't got I, have, money. To, I have to find a sale. I'm in the PJs, man. No. Just like him, man. I still cut out coupons. You know what I mean? I don't see it. I'm so broke. I'm still wearing summer clothes. Hey, yo. Just follow me on Instagram, Mello Castanello, you heard? That's a fact. Tell me once again your Instagram. Mello Castanello, M-E-L-O-K-O-S-T-A-N-E-L-L-0. So oh, why, why oh, do you close? Oh. Why do you hide your face when you name your Instagram? What's the point? <laughs> oh, nah, I don't, nah, I don't know. What I don't know. If you're ah, I, I mean, I mean, I mean. It's I mean. not for that. Listen, I'm a businessman. I ain't trying to be physical. You shit what I mean? This face good. My name good, too. But it's still good. Bow. Shit me? Big hat. However, to get branded items in New York, you don't have to pay thousands of dollars and you don't have to rob. In this sense, Harlem is like Chinatown. Canal Street. Canal Street. This is the place where you can buy anything. Few people in the city will tell you that they buy goods here. But in fact, Gucci or Dolce Cabana or Louis Vuitton, all these brands are bought here. This is the central shopping street of Chinatown. At first glance, there are vegetables and fruits here. But in reality, this is the largest counterfeit fair in America. Most of the counterfeit trades take place here in this way. Women stand at intersections with pieces of paper. These are the so-called spotters. How much is it? What's one? How much does it cost? 40? Yeah. I'll take it for $10. No, no, 10 $10. I'll buy this one for 15. $15. The woman saw that we were filming. You have pizza? You buy pizza? Don't. Don't take off. But when she saw that we were putting the camera away, she opened her booklet again. Here are all the most expensive brands. Louis Vuitton, Prada, Fendi. In stores, these are from $500 and above. How much does this one cost? I take it for 40. 40. I'll buy it for 45. Okay, name your price. I turned around. I'll take this one for 15. Huh? Hey, hello. Hey, how many pieces? One piece. What do you want? I want this one. Yes. I'll take this one. Wow. Do you have change starting at $100? Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. But these two men, they were watching. Although they have booklets, they do not sell, only monitor. Do you have a Rolex? How much does Rolex cost? One leads us to the gateway, where all the transactions take place. You see, the guy is constantly looking around. In general, raids almost never happen here. I'll tell you later. But everyone is on the lookout. Here, there are several counterfeit dealers standing on the corner at once. You see, the merchant hung herself with Chanel, Louis Vuitton badges. They can be hung on any black bag. But this is not a cheap option. Our merchant seems nervous. Call someone. It looks like they saw our hidden camera. So I constantly try to stand up so that the camera could not be seen. And finally, the main one comes. Uh, I want black. I want a black or silver Rolex. <laughs> and how much does it cost? 25. 25. <laughs> no, 25. Okay. Well, thank you. I'm leaving, pretending to leave. They didn't agree to sell a Rolex watch for $25. Well, we'll give them a little more time to think 
and see what we can find. Only official goods are allowed to be sold in stalls and stores. And counterfeit goods in the United States are fined up to $250,000 and jailed for at least a year. So many products in Chinatown are unbranded. But you've seen the diamond hand, right? Do you have the same belt? But Gucci? only from Gucci. Gucci, yeah. Gucci for you? Yes. You want a Gucci or Louis Vuitton? Louis Vuitton. What does Louis Vuitton look like? Okay, you go. Come here. The shop owner hands us over to this Chinese woman. She says follow her. On the way, he starts calling someone. I don't understand where we are going. And only at the traffic light, I notice that the woman is not only leading me. Hey, come on. Uh, go, go. Yes. A group? <laughs> I'm on the sidelines. The girl is clearly afraid. Look, she folded her arms. She wasn't expecting company either. Jokes in the, woods. the girl is haggling with her. I think we've ruined everything for her because the girls are embarrassed that we are standing next to each other. And some white people are watching her bargain. The girl calls her family, then stayed on the other side of the road. They are excited about this whole situation. <laughs> we cross the street again for some reason. And it seems that we are going to a remote place. Where are we going? Where are we going? We're being handed over to another merchant again, as they do all the time. A woman shows photos of belt options. This is a woman's belt, right? Do you have man belt? Is it for men? This is for men. Can I can I see it? This is for men. This one, right? Very similar to the female one. No, black and gray. Can I? I want to see it. What size? Okay. I don't know my size. Okay, for you, right? Yeah, yeah, for me. It's forty-five. Yeah. Twenty. 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 Twenty is a great price. Okay. Okay. Let's do twenty. Okay. Okay. Twenty-five. Okay. Okay. They brought a frightened girl who didn't want to go any further at first. Her relatives still decided to approach. The three of them are not so scary. While we wait, I look at the collection of watches they sell here. How much do they cost? About eighty-five. How much a piece? I'll take it for thirty. I take it for thirty. Thirty. Yes. She says she'll call her boss. Thirty. Thirty. No, just the belt then. Only belt. Automatic? Without a battery. Thirty. We've been talking for a while, and a guy gets out of the car. All this time, he was watching us. Did I come with a tail? Who am I? Can I be trusted? He walks as if he's not coming at me. He goes to see what's behind him. And when he's even with us, he makes a sharp turn. He has in the bag the same belt that I was waiting for, and which was laying nearby. This guy delivers the goods. The third woman takes the money. Will you sell a Rolex for 30? 30. Not enough? And what is your final price? 35. 35. 35. No, 35. She is wearing a large Prada nylon bag. 180,000 rubles. Beige Gucci Ophidia medium. 163,000 rubles. Next to it hangs a man's purse from the same Gucci collection. Only 72,400 rubles. And on the top, apparently, a variation on the messenger bag from Gucci. In the new collections, I didn't find this. 
But on eBay, I found something similar for $1,244. This is worn. Guys, someone buys these used bags for $1,244? Are you sure they're not from Chinatown? Where are we going? Over 35. I will buy an automatic watch for 35. We have already agreed. We've already agreed on 35. This guy is the boss. You see, there are no bags or posters with goods on him. As he speaks to me, he looks around. And another group is haggling to the right. Okay. Yeah, I did. I did. The guy obviously got a call. Someone said something important. He stops haggling and after a few seconds, just runs away, leaving me with my aunt. 35, okay? Well, I bought a watch for $35. Guys, this is Rolex, white gold. With some kind of inlay, black people also trade with the Chinese. But the territories are clearly divided. Now, guys, you will see what the border between the districts is. That's where the Chinese and only the Chinese trade. No one else does there. And literally on the other side of the Broadway, Chinatown is already ending. And this is already a neighborhood where only black guys sell. If the Chinese cross Broadway to trade, they will be kicked out and vice versa. If these black guys come to trade on the other side of Broadway, they will be beaten there. Why can't you trade on the other side? Uh, because the fifth prison, they're not allowed. The first prison, yes. The guys were much tougher here than in Chinatown. <laughs> they don't want to be filmed at all. How's it works? Listen, we don't do this stuff away. You want to take your order? Go over there and go to the police station. The police go around here and see everything. Listen what I'm saying. Don't tell me, don't tell me. Uh, uh, only this? Not me. Don't tell me, man. Go, go away. Why did you hit the bus? Dude, you hit someone. Why did you hit the bus? You hit someone. Why the f*** are you talking about me? It is absolutely normal story. Recently, Chinatown has seen clashes between local Asians and blacks over markets and places of trade. Do you sell it? Does someone bring them to you here? Yeah. Where did he and who? I can't tell you that. That's a secret. <laughs> Why is it? <laughs> Isn't it? What? Why do you show it on a piece of paper? It's the police. <laughs> well, the police know everything. They know now, but they don't really care about you. There is new fallout today after this video went viral showing police handcuffing a woman who was selling churros at a subway station. The police stopped chasing street vendors in New York after this story. In 2019, the churros merchant was too harshly detained. These are such sweet breadsticks. And this rally held earlier today was not only in support of that one vendor who was detained by police, but it's also in support of allowing these vendors to get licenses. It feels very nervous, very stressed, and absolutely devastated. The woman immediately had a lawyer and a whole support group. And the police informally forbade chasing illegal immigrants. We have a lot of guys that came here from this housing project that went to the NBA. Sean Green, Ron Artest, played with the Lakers. He won an NBA championship. We also have the hottest rapper. New York City projects, especially Harlem in the 1930s, became the center of a new black art movement, the so-called Harlem Renaissance. It brought us jazz, cropped flapper dresses, and, unfortunately, leopard underpants. 
spotted predator skins were first worn in Harlem in the 1920s. In 61, Russian-born Hollywood designer Oleg Cassini made a Harlem-style leopard coat for Jacqueline Kennedy, whose husband was then fighting for the black vote. And so it began. Louis Armstrong and Duke Ellington and a good half of modern rap grew up in the projects. Jay-Z, 50 Cent, Notorious B.I.G. Queensbridge House was a home to some of the best black performers of recent decades. We also have the hottest rapper, Nas. Nas. Yes, I even saw huge graffiti NAS on your wall. Yeah, we have, this is his block, bro. Yeah, this, this, yeah. this block right here. Nas was living in this block. Right, right here. here. This block right yep. here. We got a lot of famous rappers. Yeah. Yep. You know what I'm saying? We know where we come from, we go through struggling. We, we got stories to tell, so. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's probably one of the reasons why. But other than that, it's just the love of music, you know what I'm saying? Started in the Bronx, New York. You know what I'm saying? They used to bring their turntables, their, micro their microphone system. You know what I'm saying? Like, if they wanted, we wanted to gather. It was, a, it was a gathering thing. You know what I'm saying? And not every situation was a dangerous situation. There was a time where kids could come outside, have fun, go in the house. You know what I mean? So. You know, shit change over the time, man. Like anything, man. When I put God first, it's always gonna be the devil's playground, you heard? Guys, right on the bench. Pick up a beat for a new text. Everyone raps here. I was in the gutter, boy. No, they never loved us. Black people gonna suffer. Government gonna lie to us. TV keep on blinding us. They gonna flood the hood with all these so we get high as f Dealers, one the corner trapping, you gon' cop a what? Niggas beefing, they gon' ask they mans that you gon' ride or what? No bitches, they don't know no better, they gon' line you up. Black people, we can speak our mind cause they gon' silence us. They want us to fail, why they keep rising up? I said, thinking trying to win again. Thinking should I sin again? Risk it all and put it online for these Benjamins. You niggas ain't ready to die for the shit I did. Look a man right in his eyes, and you can smell a fear. Most of my niggas did time. They still living there, dropping after dropping for dime. Houdini disappeared, we ain't about no fiction here. All black fishing gear. Oh, <laughs> you know, going up, you heard? Yo, people just be warming up over here. And did you hear Breezy? breezy? Young Cat Breezy. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's my baby boy. Bro. My mama here survived to the day they all outside. I'm steady yelling free to guys. Damn. Yo, to the day they all outside, I'm steady. Yeah, yeah, that's just the f me up. Left me out here, a bunch of bird, bunch of duck. Listen, use a job turkey for the chicken, get you stuck. Yeah, and all them bitches you could cuff, cause I swear we did enough. It's Harlem. I'm still in Harlem, and it's getting dark, and I think it's time to get out of here, even though the fun starts at night. Damn it. I think the fight started. We need to get out of here. Yeah, dudes fight. All right then, we're getting out of here from Harlem. I understand that the series looks like Stas is running away. But that's life. Sometimes it's better to leave. Of course, New York City, you don't want to leave. Noisy parties, bright lights, a city that never sleeps or gets bored. But underground casinos and black neighborhoods are as much a part of the Big Apple as skyscrapers and Times Square. Which part of the city do you like the best? Write in the comments if you are interested in the downside of any city. Don't forget to like and subscribe, because we have already moved on.